Okay, so we're back. Um, thank you um, for uh, bearing with us uh, while we got all set up there, folks. I don't think that was too long. So, um, uh, uh, Erica, thank you very much for being here today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Thanks for having me. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, um, which I imagine has been a fairly big part of your life for the last uh, 12 months. Yeah, actually the last like five years almost. Right. But yeah. <laughs> I guess from from like a, you've probably had a lot of fans more interact more interactions with fans in the last twelve months I would say, yeah, um, but uh, yeah I imagine it's it's been quite the roller coaster. But I really appreciate you joining me today. I've, I've been really lucky to to have had the opportunity to talk with. I'm trying to think. We spoke with Gideon Emery. Um, we spoke with uh, John Bentley. Um, we spoke with Brianna White, Britt Barron. Um, so we've very much been wanting to uh, connect with you, and uh, and I think I'd reached out to you for Pomline too, but I think you just missed my email. Um, yeah, I'm getting so many emails. I couldn't. It's all good. Track. I'm but sorry about no, absolutely fine. And we're here today, which which is all that really matters. So thanks very much for joining me. Absolutely. So uh, as I I know we just kind of briefly discussed this um, before we came on stream, but I I always ask my guests the first, and it's always the same question: How's COVID treating you? How is the world pandemic affecting you? Uh, well, um, even COVID aside, that's been a very big week. Um, it's, 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 I honestly, my brain is so fuzzy. I, I can't even, I don't even have a beat on how it's treating me or anything because it's been so long at this point. I don't really remember what it was like before. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm just like, well, this is life. I've just decided to kind of, um, embrace it and live in it and not try to fight what's happening because I, there's nothing I can do. I just have to like be as safe as I can and try not to contribute to, uh, spread in COVID. <laughs> I think that's a really good way of looking at it because really there's, I mean, we all individually, we can all do our part, right. But, um, there is only so much that, uh, that we can do. Um, I will uh, forewarn you um, that um, er Erica did warn me that they're um, having some power surges, um, so it may drop in and out there. Um, we lost you for one second there, but you're back again. Um, uh, so um, I guess before COVID, w would have PAX been the last thing that you did? Yeah, that was actually the last flight I had. So I, I we went to PAX and that was it. I had a bunch of conventions planned this year. I was really excited, obviously, mm. to like hang out with, you know, meet, meet the fans and, and talk about Final Fantasy VII and all that. But that was not in the cards. Yeah, that's <laughs> so. really unfortunate. I mean, because it literally was like days after PAX when yeah. things, because I know that we were in London with John and we were on the flight back and it was literally two days, three days. Yeah. And it was like lockdown and we were like, wow. Um, exactly. It was like a week or something, yeah. a week after. It was crazy. I mean, I know that I, we were all quite concerned. We were thinking, you know, we've we've traveled thousands of miles. We've been on flights. We've been everywhere. We've met so many people. My God, let's hope that we haven't picked up anything, right? But um, yeah, totally. Very, yeah. very lucky. Anyway, putting aside COVID, which seems to be um, the, the giant black cloud um, over everyone's lives at the moment. Um, one thing that you mentioned is that um, even with COVID going on, one of the... Um, perks of the the kind of work that you do is voice acting is really you just need a good microphone and a good location and you can continue to record so um yeah you're still keeping busy yeah 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 i've been really really fortunate to keep working during all this it's been nice nice yeah, I had a call with uh, John one time and uh, he, I'd, I'd, I'd never seen these before. Um, maybe it probably seems like second nature to you. But when he called me, it looked like he was in like, I thought he was in a basement or something. It was pitch black. And he had oh, like yeah. this bubble on his head. And he was yeah. like talking into the microphone. I was like, John, like, where are you? Is like, you've been like, is someone, you know, like kidnapped you or something? But I guess it's like, it's to stop the echo, right? That's the, the purpose of the bubble. Yeah. Yeah, I, this is my um, streaming setup, so right. I'm definitely not in my booth yeah, yeah. or anything like that. I had no yeah. idea what what he was doing, but uh, he, <laughs> he he cleared it up quite quickly for us. So anyway, let's uh, let's talk about Jesse. Um, first and foremost, what a wonderful job you did with the character, um, Thank you. because you know before Jesse was just a bunch of pixels, <laughs> had no voice. Not to mention mm -hmm. that the original Final Fantasy VII game didn't really have um, didn't have too much information about the character of Jesse. She was very much a side character, and in the remake, she was very much 
you know um pushed forward and she had her own story and and uh it was it was really great uh, it was just great to see the character develop can you tell me a little bit about the experience of um getting the role um and uh you know the audition did you know what you were going for yeah i i did because they i believe they provided some character art so i i gleaned from that what this was um it was, it was five years ago, almost, I think actually, I think I recorded the trailer in November of 2014 or 2015. I can't remember, but, um, but yeah, it, it, I, I, I knew what it was and I was really excited, obviously. Um, but, but sorry, point being, uh, they needed to cast a few of the characters early because of the trailer for the PlayStation experience, right. um, that right. happened, the first English trailer that Jesse actually funnily enough had the first line in. So, uh, I did an audition. I sent it in, uh, they came back and said, Hey, we liked what you did. Can you do a couple little tweaks? I redid it. And then I sent it in and that was it. I went in and did that trailer years ago. And then I'd been sitting on it for like three and a half, four years before they got the call. Hey, you're still Jesse. Come in and record for the game. Did you at any point just think, uh, this is, it's not going to happen. And just, you, you know, just cast it aside. Was the call coming in saying, Hey, we're going again. Was that kind of like, Oh, right. I forgot about that. It, no, I had, I definitely hadn't forgotten about it. Um, it, it was, uh, it was exciting, but also I go into things with very low expectations just because I've been, I've been a part of a lot of games that have gotten canceled. Right. I, Thing. I've booked parts and things that never went and I've been replaced in things. Mm -hmm. So I just was kind of trying to keep a low profile on it. It was always in the back of my mind though. And I was, you know, I really got the, from the second I did the trailer, I got, I became very like protective of Jesse. It was a part that I wanted to keep. Mm -hmm. It was a part that I wanted to explore. And I loved the fact that again, she had just been kind of a stack of pixels and now they were really making an effort to expand her story. And I was like, I want that. I want to do that. So, yeah, so it was great. It was lovely. So you um, have the part, you have a delay in doing anything, and then the opportunity comes back, you're in the studio, um, and you start getting the dialogue. Tell me about your experiences in the studio. Um, did you get much direction on how they wanted to portray Jesse, or did you go in and just kind of say, well, this is kind of what I'm, what I'm thinking? They kind of just let me go. They really, I feel like they put a lot of trust in me. There was a lot of, um, moving and shaking as far as getting things to fit, um, like lip flap and all that or mm -hmm. not, not lip, but timing and, ev and everything like that. But other than that, they really let me put my spin on her, which I'm super grateful for. Um, yeah, we just, we, we figured it out together. It was definitely a joint effort, but, um, they really, they really let me, they really let, I feel like let me lead and let me, you know, make, make choices, which was nice. So something I really notice about Jesse and, um, uh... I really love about the character is how vibrant she is. And she's almost a little bit thirsty. She has got such a, like her in cloud, like before yeah. the remake came out, there was no, in my mind, I don't believe in the fandom, there wasn't very much cloud and Jesse. It was cloud and Aerith or cloud and Tifa. And then the yep. remake comes along and everyone's like, don't care. It's all about cloud and Jesse. Um, so, you know, this, this thirsty, flirtatious character, did they tell you going in that that's what they, that that's how they wanted it to be? Or is that just natural progression? That was just the natural progression. Okay. I remember reading, going through some of the scenes, cause I wouldn't get scripts in advance. Like we would just do it as we went as with a lot of video games. Um, and I remember just going, Oh my God, does she really say this? Mm -hmm. Can I go for it? And they were like, yup, go for it. Just do your thing. Um, yeah, someone's mowing a lawn. I love that. I can't hear uh, it. You're good. That's good. Um, yeah, they did. That was just the progression. It wasn't like, okay, Erica, we need you to play her super thirsty for cloud. It just happened. It was all there. I just, I just, uh, goosed it a little. I just took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And then when like you started to see the fan reaction, because obviously in the trailer, um, you know, you see, a, you see Jesse, but you don't see that chemistry between her and yeah. cloud or even maybe their lack of chemistry. Um, but, uh, in the actual game, you do see that. And, uh, how, what was the reaction from the fans? Did you get a lot of people coming to you and just like, I love that. Like, especially there's a scene, um, where they're at Jesse's place and she's talking about coming in for pizza and all this and she's thirsty. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. she, she, she wants that. She wants that boy. Yeah. She definitely wants that boy for sure. Um, I, uh, 
Oh, sorry, can you repeat the question? There's so much going on. I'm hearing this. Like, no, it's super perfectly loud. fine. Um, <laughs> so uh, we were talking about the chemistry oh, between the fans. What, yeah, what did yeah. the fans think? Yes. Yeah. Um, I was really surprised at what a fan favorite Jesse became. Like that was, it was like a dream come true. It really was. Cause you don't, you know, being a part of a huge game is one thing, but having a character that just like transcends, um, sort of the, the place that they, that they originally held is, is it's staggering, especially on such a, on such a massive project where there are so many amazing characters. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, I was just floored at how, how incredible the fans have been and how, how much they liked her and, and all that. And yeah, I mean, I think, I think there is a, like a, I mean, obviously there's a comedic aspect to Jesse and, I don't know that she necessarily means everything she says. I think sometimes she's just trying to get cloud to loosen up, um, you know, and mm -hmm. I feel like I am that person for some people as well. So that was something that I really clicked into with her is sometimes you're the, you're the fun, you're the funny one. You're the one that makes these, you know, grandiose, ridiculous statements just to get a rise out of the other person because you're trying to get them to loosen up a little bit. I can see the similarities in that respect between you and uh, Jesse, like I, I know that I don't know you personally, but just from your tweets, I can tell that you're a, you're a vibrant individual who basically <laughs> like, I'm going to do it. And it's, it's the entertainment factor. Um, yeah. and, uh, I can see that in Jesse too. She's, uh, such a, it's such a, the character is so much different than the original because there was so little to go on. And then yeah. in the remake, she had so much content. Now, how familiar were you with the, cause I know that, I mean, looking at your IMDB is, well, we'd, we'd be here all day. Um, it's, you have an incredible, um, line of work. So congratulations to you. Um, but how much did you know about the game before the remake? Um, okay. So my, my history with final fantasy is a little odd because I never actually played it, right. but I fell into a rabbit hole when I was about 15 years old and I went online and watched all of the cut scenes right. from crisis right. core. Right. Cause I did not have a, um, oh my gosh, I keep forgetting. PSP. Is it a PSP? PSP. Yeah. I, like, yeah, PSP. PSP. Yeah. Yes, I didn't have a PSP, but I remember going, wait, what happens? I don't understand. Like, why is Zach not in final fantasy seven? Like what's going on here? Mm -hmm. And then I went and watched advent children and, you know, I, I became kind of enamored with the story, but funnily enough, didn't know a ton about Avalanche because obviously they're not a part or at least Jesse's not a part of Advent Children or Crisis Core. So um, I, I was familiar with the story and how the, just the sort of pervasive melancholia of a Final Fantasy game. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what drew me to it. I always said I wanted to be in a Final Fantasy game. I said that for years. I was like, that's that's what I want. I would love to, just because I, I there's something about living, like languishing and wallowing in that world that there's something cathartic about it for me. So did they come um, to you um, or did you just see a, something that there was a role for a Final Fantasy and you were like, oh, I'm going for it because I, I want that opportunity? My agents send me auditions and I do the auditions. That's, you know, that's kind of what happened. But uh, the, yeah. the worlds collided and, and what you wanted, you, you actually got the opportunity to be in there. Yeah. 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 You usually don't, you know, I auditioned for uh, so many things that I don't book. Uh, and this one time it worked out. It's worked out a few times to be fair, but mm -hmm. you know, this time it did work out. So as I already mentioned in the original, she, d Jesse doesn't really have that much character development, but in this, she does. They, and, um, I don't want to go into too much spoiler material if I can help it. Um, but she, you know, Jesse has a bit of a rough time. Um, mm. she's had a bit of a rough life. You can tell that she didn't come from, um, quite the background that matches what she does now. Um, I really enjoyed the backstory that they talk about her family and her father. And then, you know, as you get towards the game, um, not very nice things are happening in, in Jesse's world. Um, yeah. how, how was that for you to have to portray these kind of scenes towards the end of the remake without being too particular? Um, it was really hard. It was, it was really difficult, especially just my journey with Jesse has been so long. And I knew, I knew those scenes were coming. Um, and I knew they were going to be difficult, but, um, you know, you do what you got to do to serve the peace as well as you can. And I kind of used all that sadness that I felt in, I don't know. I, I, I have really weird feelings attached to Jesse because I, I think I said before, I'm very protective of her in mm -hmm. a way because I, I said this in another interview, but you know, she's not Tifa and she's not Aerith and she's not, she's not the it girl and she's not the strongest, um, you know, 
she's, she's not like the girl and it almost makes what, what happens like more tragic because she, she was never like the favorite. Um, and that's, I don't know. I think a lot of us feel that way. Um, and so it makes her more relatable. And then to have to know what, what happens, you know, we know, we, at least if you've played, you know, the original game, you know what happens. And there's something m- almost more horrific about having to relive it in gory detail. Um, Once you knew yeah. that you had the remake part, did you go and um, find out the full story of Because oh, I know, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I knew from when I auditioned. I had, yeah, yeah, I knew. Gotcha. I knew, and that, that, that was tough too. I, I remember there were some kind of leading lines that we, that we recorded for the first trailer that I don't think ever made it in. Right. Um, just some lines about her talking about her bombs and I don't understand. I thought I made them right. I thought I did it right. It just, yeah, there's just a lot, there's a lot there. Mm. Yeah. Now, um, were you, were you at the, I forget the name of the theater, but when they originally announced the remake, um, were you there for that? Oh no. Uh-uh. You didn't no. make that one. Cause I don't know if John ever told you the story, but John Bentley was sat next to a reporter um, mm-hmm. Ed, and he didn't realize it was, you know, they were just chatting and obviously he didn't know that John Bentley was the voice of Barrett. And I guess once oh. the trailer started, the reporter like basically broke down and cried um, because he was so blown away that he was sat next to Barrett. Right. Um, oh, but it yeah. brings me on to the point of that when I guess really f- PAX would have been the first time that you were really like thrown in to the, with the fans. Right. Um, Tell me yeah. about the experience of being at PAX. Oh. First of all, Square treated us so well. They were incredible to, to work with. It was such an honor because I, I, I assumed that, you know, that it was just nice for them to bring out, um, you know, Biggs and, uh, and Jesse in addition to sort of the main the main cast. I know that they have a, a big role, obviously, in the game, but it was just it was just so lovely. And the fans were so grateful to us. They were so they were like, thank you so much. And I'm sitting there going, are you kidding me? Thank you. Like, I feel so lucky to even be here. Um, I don't know what I love. Like, I, there's the fact that anyone's thanking me is mm-hmm. insane because um, I don't feel like I did anything. I just I just got this incredible opportunity and, you know, made the most of it. So, I mean, that could- it, the, so that must have been a little bit weird at the time because it, at that time the game wasn't even out yet. Yeah, um, yeah. They would have played the demo. I'm yeah, just, which Jesse. She's Jessie in the demo. Did, um, she's in the demo. I also did did this intro to the demo. They they really heavily featured Jesse in a lot of the ads in the promo right. to the point where I was like, oh my god, this is crazy that she's in me so much. Um, but yes, yeah, so they were a little bit familiar with Jesse. I think they knew that she was going to have a much larger mm. role. There was a game. great line from Jesse towards the beginning. I don't know if you remember recording it, uh, but um, during the early parts of the remake, there's a part where you're walking through lasers. And if you keep hitting the laser, Jesse says something along the lines of like, do you have a fetish or something? Um, because yeah, he keeps getting burned constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is this, is this your thing? Yeah. Cloud? Like what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. It's just these little lines like that. It give her such, such character, you know, and it really does bring her to life. So you had packs, uh, you then come away from that. The game comes out and I know you're very active on social media. So how was that after the game comes out, bang all over the world, what's happening for you? I remember, um, I remember, you know, I'd look at all the Tifa and Aerith fan art and be like, oh, wow, I wish there would be more Jesse fan art. And then mm. it was just a barrage of Jesse fan art and everyone like loving her and just getting behind her. And it was just so lovely to see. Um, I wanted, I wanted people to love her and they did. And mm. that was great. Yeah, definitely. You could, um, you can definitely see, I've seen some incredible fan art. Yeah. Um, I've seen some eye turning fan art too. Um, but, uh, Jessie's definitely been thrown in. I, I definitely think she's a hot favorite for the, for the remake. It's such a great character. And we have quite a few questions from, uh, people who've submitted questions prior to the stream and, uh, from people in the chat. So if you do have a question, pop it in and the mods will pick it up. Would you mind answering a few questions from the... Okay. Cool. Um, so, um, um, Mo asks, um, this obviously might be a bit difficult to answer, but we'll give it a shot. Um, if you could tell any side story about Jesse's character, what would it involve? So if you could like, if you, if you like wanted to expand on her character, if you wish they'd expanded in more ways, what, what kind of would you like them to have done? I don't know. I'd like to see something of Jesse, maybe when she was a little younger, why she's made the decisions that she's made 
you know, to, to, to join Avalanche and all that. Um, I don't know. I'd be really interested in more of her backstory. I think they do mention quite a bit about her, you know, being a, uh, her mother thinks she's a showgirl, and uh, yeah. she was a showgirl. It would have been quite interesting to see some of that content for sure. Yeah, yeah. that, and I also just love I love what Biggs and Wedge and Jesse have together, and I'd love to see more of that. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, Tabitha says, uh, Jesse is so bouncy and yet grounded in the remake, especially around the boys in Avalanche. What do you think of her relationship with Barrett, Wedge and Biggs? Um, it's, it's great. I love their relationship. Um, I, I, there, there's like nothing I would change about it. I think it's, I think it's funny. And I think that they all val- value each other as, as people, as friends, as like partners, um, yeah, I like that. There's a lot of, they bring a lot of levity to the situations that they're in. Would you say, we, would you say that like Biggs and Wedge is more kind of, they have like more of like a siblingly type relationship? Oh yeah. Yeah. And maybe with Barrett, it's a bit more fatherly figure type. Yeah. 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 Definitely. He definitely puts his foot down a few times in the game. Oh yeah. Um, so we have a question here, uh, from Lewis. Um, do you have a favorite moment that you got the chance to act out as Jesse? What was your favorite moment that you recorded? Mm, I love the whole scene on the bike on the Hardy Daytona Mm -hmm. one with Roche. I think that scene was so good. It just was, I loved all the stuff I got to say to him. Like, like if you, if you, you know, if you do better and better, she says, like thirstier things to you, essentially. Yeah, uh, I love that. Also, anytime I got to yell out Cloud's name, I was so like taken aback that I was in a video game, like in Final Fantasy VII, yelling out for Cloud. That was and it, and one of one of them made him into it, made it into a trailer, which was great. I was so excited about that. So it was like you were acting out the excitement of the character, but actually, really, what you're hearing is Erica going, "I'm in a Final Fantasy." Yeah, gotcha. Are. Yeah. Trying That's to cool. Keep cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Nikki says in the remake, uh, Jesse invites Cloud over for a pizza date. Mm-hmm. Um, if you uh, if you were a type of pizza topping, what would you be and why? What a random I, question. Not what pizza topping would you like. What topping would you be? What topping would I be? Mm. That's that's a very interesting. Um, uh, Don't say pineapple, don't Christ. I was get, I actually like pineapple on pizza. Oh no, we can't be friends. I, okay, well, you know, <laughs> the, 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 um, I was uh, I'd probably be I really like avocado on pizza, but that's not like what I'd be. I feel like I'd be something really odd, like an egg. I'd be an egg. Egg. Yeah, egg on pizza. I've never had that. I have, but yeah, I think I'd be an egg. <laughs> Fair. Take 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 what you want from that, folks. Um, okay, so um, we've got a question from Amy here. What is the well? We kind of covered this in a little bit, but we'll we'll mention it again. What's the impact um, been on you voicing Jesse? Um, I definitely feel like my career shifted a little bit as far as my visibility when uh, when FF Seven was announced, when that cast list was dropped. Mm. Um, well, the game has huge following. Massive. Yeah, oh my god, massive, massive following. Uh, just to be a part of something like that, and also to have it be so well received, especially. I mean, the whole game was obviously very well received, but ha- having your character also be super well received, especially since she's never had a voice, so it was kind of a crapshoot. Like this is this character; she's never been voiced before. Um, Were you nervous at all? Because of obviously oh, being a remake, it's like I was. You, so mm. I was oh my god, the first couple sessions I did on her, I was so scared. I was terrified i was like if, if i it's over for me if mm. this doesn't go. <laughs> oh you did good <laughs> thank you uh melissa asks if you took cloud on a date what would the date entail close I your ears like children <laughs> i feel like i'd take i'd take him to like putt putt golf or something i think that'd be hilarious that would have actually I, made a really good i wish i kind of wish they'd been able to go on a date in the remake i think yeah. that would have really added to it yeah I don't know why the idea of him doing putt putt is really funny to me, like mini golf. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I saw a question that's popped up in the chat quite a few times. People have uh, noticed your cats roaming. Do you want oh. to introduce your cats to us? Uh, sure. Uh, all right. This one's been here bothering me the whole time. Here, this is um. Oh my god, this is Ash. <laughs> oh, he's a big a boy. Fat boy, yeah. 
He's right here. Kika, I don't know if she's going to want to go over there. <laughs> let, me, let me see if I can get her. Good luck. Thank you. Kika. If you don't come back, we'll assume you just got scratched to death. Can I just say, hi, Come here. Come here, baby. Oh, God, she's already... Ke oh, God, she hates me. It's great. Ke what? <laughs> This is Kika. She's very angry. Oh, but what she's a pretty cat. Kika. <laughs> is that a boy or a girl? The girl. Her Lovely name. eyes. I know. She's gorgeous. She says she was a stray. People think I bought her. She was found on like the side of the road. It definitely looks like a, um, like a, I'm not sure if pedigree is the right word for a cat. It probably isn't, but um, it looks like a breeded cat. It's gorgeous. Yeah. She was a rescue. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, those are them. She's mad now. She's just sitting behind me. Like Is that the two pets that you have? Two cats? Yeah. Yeah. I just have the two cats. Mm -hmm. So it was fair to say you're more of a cat person than a dog person. You know, no, I like dogs. I actually grew up with, I grew up with dogs, but I live in Los Angeles and having a dog is tough. You know, you mm. got to have a yard and it's tough to afford a yard <laughs> the, uh, out here. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to double check here if we have any other questions. My mods are just tallying right now. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I would like to touch on is something that um, <laughs> Alan, one of my mods has just said, chat's completely swallowed by pizza and cat right now. Um, one of the things that... Um, that um, is quite interesting about the remake, and again, I'm going to try to avoid spoilers if we can. Um, the game ends a little bit differently to what people yeah. expected. Mm -hmm. um, how can I put this? Do you have hopes that there will be further explore, exploration of the Jesse character? Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, I, I have no idea, though. It was it was crazy. Somebody people were making like conspiracy videos because I think Britt Barron and I were in the same studio. I was not recording for that. that. Right. I, I like guys, Skylark casts for a bunch of stuff like there are a lot of different games. I, so. I, I am aware of the, uh, the I know I was like, I was like, oh, my God, like, I guess I'm never posting a picture of myself in a booth again because it's going to make people think, you know, 85 different things or whatever. But, yeah, I was recording for something completely separate. It's and at uh, the same day, um another voice actor, I won't specify, another voice actor had posted that he'd gone to one of his favorite, I think it was like a um, milkshake store, smoothie store, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was the same time you'd both posted these images. So everyone was just, that's yeah, what I mean, conspiracy theory, right? Oh <laughs> yeah, it, it was nuts. But no, I mean, at this point, at this point, there hasn't been anything, but I hope in the future, you know, yeah. Mm. We yeah. Great. Well, I think we're about um, ready to wrap it up. We've been here for half an hour. I just want to say a big thanks for, for joining us. I really, I mean this, I'm, I'm not just saying this. I, I think the character Jesse's fantastic now. Um, yeah. You know, it was so little to go on in the original and now she's just got so much character. And yeah. uh, I don't think, um, I think, you know, I, I think a portion of that has to do with the writing, but I think the largest portion is on you. I think you've done a great job um, in, uh, in, in bringing the character to life so so congrats for that that's so kind thank you thank you for having me thank you and hopefully when the world allows it you can come and join us at a coupacon sometime um i would love that i would absolutely love like that. i don't know if um if you had a chance to talk to brie um when uh, when she was at pax because she would have done our vancouver coupacon in november mm -hmm. um that was uh, the last time i saw brianna actually i, I met brianna just a year ago Actually, God, I think it's next week. Um, and we haven't hosted a physical event since March. Um, but that's to be expected. But no, I, I wish you the best of health. And um, I hope that we can get together very, very soon. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, just stay with me there, Erica. Um, I'm just going to say um, goodbye to you in a second, but I'm just going to switch over. And then afterwards, we'll be back with um, Eric Roth, um, who is the music director for A New World. Uh, right back, folks. Mm -hmm.